Welcome everyone. Today we have Rafael Elbaz from Unicargo. How are you? Hey guys, how are you Sam? Thank you for having me. I'm good, thank you very much. How are you today? Doing great, thanks. Great. So I'm just uh, asked you a few questions. Um, I mean, what have, been, what have you been doing? How you got into e-commerce? All that good stuff. All right, cool. Uh, so a little small introduction. Uh, my name is Rafael. I'm the CEO and founder of Unicargo. Um, Unicargo is a freight forwarding company I founded back in 2014 after a lot of years in the freight forwarding industry. Um, you know, how I got into it is actually a funny story. Um, it's pretty long, but, you know, to, to cut long story short, um, one of our clients, I was the manager at the, at, at the big company. I was an air export manager, like an air freight division manager for a big freight forwarding company. And, you know, back in 2014, um, one of our clients approached me and said, hey, I, I want to ship goods to Amazon. I said, hey, that's not a problem. Give me all, um, you know, your shipment details, sizes and weight and everything. And he gave me all the details. I gave him a quote. He was happy with it. He wanted to go along. And when we started the shipping, I said, hey, you know, on a traditional freight forwarding, you got to have a consignee. Give me your, 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 your receiver telephone number. Give me his uh, name, his address. We got to call him to schedule delivery. And he said, hey, no, that's Amazon. It doesn't work like that. I, I, I cannot give you a telephone number. You cannot schedule it. You just, you deliver and I started fighting with him. I said, hey, it doesn't work like that. You know, it, it can be true. I started, we started fighting. He said, you don't understand anything. And I said, hey, you don't understand a thing. Leave me alone. And I went home angry. And, you know, out of curiosity, I logged in into Facebook and, you know, started Googling Amazon FBA. And I found this huge live and kicking community. And I started doing some research. I went back to work. Um, the next day and I said, hey, you know what, you were right. I was the stupid one. Um, I'll find a way. And we started researching the whole thing. And I started really getting into uh, Amazon scheduling, Amazon deliveries. And we did that shipment. And since then, um, I started the company. And I, I understood, I saw a lot of potential back in 2014 to that um, to that business um, and we knew e-commerce is gonna go crazy big and we see it now five years later that it's actually getting bigger by the year um, we started I started from you know from my home office and today Unicargo is is about 60 employees around the world um, we have 30 employees in Israel 20 in China Unicargo China we have an office in the US, in New Jersey. We have an office in Germany. We have an office in Turkey and in Italy. Um, we've been doing, we've been, we've been one of the first to actually create a company that actually is dedicated to e-commerce logistics. Uh, we, we specialize in obviously China, US, China, Canada, um, China, Europe, India, Taiwan, Thailand, Philippines, basically all of the you know, Eastern, Eastern, Southeast Asian countries to Western world. Obviously, we work with wherever Amazon is based, whether it's Australia, Japan, um, all of Europe. Uh, we started doing Amazon Brazil, Amazon Mexico. Basically, that's that's our bread and butter today. Um, that's you know, the, just very short introduction about um, our company. Um, today we service thousands of clients every month um, from all over the world. Um, our offices are based in a very interesting timeline, in a very interesting geographic location that we are able to provide 24 hour service because our office in China has that time zone and we are in Israel have the middle time zone. And then our US office has the rest of the, 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 the day basically. So that's an interesting thing that we managed to, to, to build. Um, yeah, that's it. Really briefly by myself, we became very famous um, in Israel, in um, Eastern Europe, in the US. We do a lot of content. We well, basically we understand shipping and logistics in the e-commerce world. You know, for Amazon, so is a very big. Um, it's it's it, that subject is really less talked about. You know, courses basically teach people how to sell on Amazon, how to rank their product how to find what is actually 
you know, what, what is a good demand for a product, how to work on your reviews, your, um, you know, your photographs, your listing and everything, but nobody really talks in depth about logistics. And if you like it or not, international trade is a big part of your business, right? You gotta, you gotta manufacture, you gotta take over quality control, you gotta understand quality control, you gotta understand talking in the language of international trade, which actually is, has, has its own language. And you gotta understand importing into countries. You gotta understand, understand shipping types. If you do, if you really wanna master your business, you know, supply chain is a very big and crucial part of your business. And we realize that. And today, um, uh, Unicargo is covering all, all over ten schools and academies around the world for Amazon. Uh, we do a lot of lectures. We do a lot of content. Uh, we have a very interesting blog post where we write every month about a very interesting subject related to Amazon sellers and the supply chain. Um, that's that's it, basically. Great. Now we're just going to get uh, right into the, the good stuff, the presentation yep. uh, that you prepared. So thank you for that. Yep, exactly. So I'm going to show my screen. Um, I made a small presentation and basically today we're going to discuss um, one of, you know, from, from our experience, we deal with a lot of sellers and we, I kind of gathered the most uh, asked questions um, that we get from sellers. Um, and those, those questions are actually not for only for, from beginner sellers, even the most advanced sellers don't really understand um, international freight and importing and import regulations. So that presentation is basically for advanced sellers as well as um, um, uh, new sellers. So everybody can benefit from it. Um, so we already did the introduction. I'm the CEO of Unicargo. I've been dealing with international uh, shipping, logistics, supply chain management for over 13 years now. Um, and logistic consultant for over 10 Amazon courses and academies around the world. And today we are going to discuss um, beginner's guide to incoterms. I'm going to discuss about incoterms. I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how to uh, save some money and how not to make very big and costly mistakes by understanding those, uh, the most common rules of incoterms. Um, we're going to talk about HS codes and import duties, uh, which means that um, we want to, we want you to understand your landed cost. You gotta understand exactly um, how much duty you're gonna pay when you're gonna import a product. We're gonna talk about ten of the most common mistakes to avoid. Uh, super important things to keep in mind when dealing with international shipping to Amazon. And lastly, we're gonna discuss mastering last mile delivery. All right, there's a lot of tips on how to utilize your seller central um, to better serve your business needs and, and save some costs and we'll get to it. That's a very interesting uh, topic. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, if you have any questions, um, you know, we, after every subject, uh, I'll, I'll let you some, ask some questions so um, we can make it more clear. Um, let, let's start with Inco terms. So basically Inco terms, you probably all, oh, let, me, let me just, da -da 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 -da. There you go, oh, that's better. Uh, so basically, in terms, you probably all heard of it. If you started dealing with suppliers, started uh, working on Alibaba, uh, started talking to actual uh, Chinese factories, you understand that they have cer certain um, language that they speak. In terms is part of it. Um, really briefly about in terms, uh, in terms are a set of rules which defines the responsibility, all right, the risks and delivery, the costs of buyers and sellers regarding international transportation and delivery. Um, Incoterms are ex accepted by governments, legal authorities, and lawyers around the world. That's actually rules, that's laws today, Incoterms. Um, they are published and updated every 10 years. Next year, uh, we're gonna have Incoterms 2020 um, with updated um, rules. Um, they are published by the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce. Um, basically, these are a series of three letters uh, that actually means trade terms, all right? Uh, you probably heard of it, EXW, FOB, FCA, CIF, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Today, I'm going to discuss 
Um, you know, in incoterms, you have about 11 incoterms today. Most of them you don't really need to understand because it doesn't really um, matter. Uh, we're going to discuss the most common ones, which are these five EXW, XWorks, FOB, that's free on board, DDU, DDP, and CIF, CIF. right? Uh, so you're going you're gonna to start talking to a supplier and you're going to, let's say you're buying cups, all right? You're, you're buying drink, drinking cups, you intend to sell them on Amazon, and you, you're going to start chatting with a supplier on Alibaba on the chat platform, and you're going to say, hey, Dear supplier, I want to buy 1,000 of 1,000 1,000 units of um, your drinking cups. Uh, give me a quote. How much is it going to cost me? And then he's going to reply something like, "Hey, 1,000 cups under X Works terms uh, will cost you one dollar per unit." So X Works X Works terms means that the supplier, the seller, is only responsible to manufacturing those goods. All right, and He's responsible to put them at his kind of gate or warehouse or whatever, and the buyer needs to do the rest. Um, if you can see here, the risks, the, the blue part, and the, sorry, the risks are the, the yellow part, the costs are the blue part. See the seller, risk and costs end at his factory, which means the buyer is responsible for getting freight forwarder or getting whatever he wants. He needs to, he needs to arrange the transportation by himself, and that's where freight forwarders comes into place. He hires a freight forwarder, and the freight forwarders start um, dealing with his shipment. All right. So if you buy under EXW, that's we're gonna discuss. We're gonna keep the the example of the cups. One thousand units under one dollar per per unit. That's basically that's should be the cheapest um, income to work with because your supplier does doesn't have any additional costs. Um, besides just making those cups for you, all right? On some, some products, EXW buying under XWorks terms is really dangerous, and we're going we're gonna to discuss that in the, um, uh, couple of, in the next uh, chapters of, of, on mistakes to avoid. Because, for example, XWorks also means that the supplier is not responsible for any export licenses, any export regulation. He, well, once he finished production, that's it. He's done. You need to take care of it with your, by yourself, with your freight forwarder. And in China, export regulation for certain products can be very tricky. For example, things with powders, things with liquids, products with liquids inside, products with powders. Um, batteries are not that complicated, but powders, liquids, um, paints, um, these type of, of products are basically requiring export um, licenses and export certificates. And if your supplier doesn't help you, it can be a bit tricky and it could be costly. And you wouldn't, under, um, you wouldn't know that until you actually have your freight forwarder contact your supplier and start your shipment. And then it, it'll get stuck. Then your freight forwarder will have to ask you, hey, we need to issue this and that certificate now. Do you have it? And you'll, you won't have it because you bought it under XWorks, right? Let's take, for example, you know, those marker pens. A lot of people are selling them on Amazon. Um, these nice babies, right? You buy a pack of 10 or 20 different colors and every color will have to make a certificate and that will come up to a crazy amount of two to three thousand dollars only on certificate for export. And it's crazy. And people don't know that, and um, that's that's a very you know a costly mistake that you gotta avoid. All right, let's talk about the second term. That's FOB. That's one of the most common terms um, out there. Basically, FOB means uh, free on board, right? If you see the costs and risk of the seller, they are extended up to the carrier, up to the, up to the origin port. Which means, let's get back to the cups, the one thousand cups. You decide to buy 1,000 cups under FOB terms, uh, and those cups will now cost you $1.2 per unit. Why is that? Because now the supplier, besides manufacturing those products, will have to um, will have to truck it to the port and take care of all the export um, costs, right? Um, like port entry, uh, loading, and documents, and customs clearance and export and everything. Those things, those you know that. 
operational procedure in China or in India or wherever you, whatever, wherever you are buying from, it, have, it has costs. Um, so basically on FOB, to summarize FOB, uh, when you buy under FOB terms, the seller, your supplier, your Chinese manufacturer, his liability and cost will be to deliver that product and to take care of the insurance up to the carrier, up to the freight forwarder's warehouse, up to the actual port, including all the export licenses, all the export regulation, including all the costs and everything, all right? Ocean freight, ocean shipments, um, we really, really, really recommend buying under FOBs. Um, and again, um, non-general goods, non-general items like liquids, powders, paints, um, markers, pens, everything that can has any, any type of powder, um, liquids, you know, these glitter, glitter uh, products have a lot of problems with exporting. Um, so, yeah, basically ocean freight, ocean shipment would be re really recommended by an under cost. Another nice tip is sometimes when you buy EXW, X-Works, your freight, not sometimes, all the, always, your freight forwarder will have to, to get a truck and pick it up from your factory. And sometimes a lot of suppliers have their own trucks in the warehouse. So for them, buy, you know, for them selling you under FOB is very cheap because they have their own trucks. Sometimes they have their cousins, sometimes they have their friends, sometimes they actually take it on their van and they'll bring it by themselves. And another hack here, whenever you get a quote from a supplier, ask for both prices, ask, ask for EXW and ask for FOB terms. All right, what, what will happen is you talk to your supplier about those 1,000 cups and those 1,000 cups will tell you, all right, uh, under EXW terms, that cup will cost you $1 per unit and under FOB terms, that cup will cost you $1.2 per, per, per unit. And then if you have 1,000 unit, you understand the difference is $200 because 20 cents times um, 1,000 units is $200. And then you can ask your freight forwarder, hey, give me a quote based on AXW terms and, and based on FOB terms. And that freight forwarder should give you a breakdown on the local cost in China. And if you see that the freight forwarder, the local cost by the freight forwarder is 300 bucks, that's good. Just buy it under FOB terms with your supply and you saved $100. If your supplier is quoting you 400 or 500 dollars for the difference between EXW and FOB, and then you can check it with your freight forward, it usually will be around. Again, it really depends on the size and weight of the on the shipment of the shipment, the volume of it. Um, but usually, local charges in China will vary from 100 dollars to 400 dollars for low, less than container loads. Uh, full container loads are much more expensive, and in full container loads, it's really recommend recommended to buy under FOB terms. Um, but I guess um, we'll, we'll talk about the smaller shipments now. So basically take two of those prices from a supplier, try to get a quote for those units, for those products that you wanna buy under EXW terms and under FOB terms and calculate your actual costs, what your actual costs in China, all right? And then you can compare it with your freight forward and then you can buy for your supplier, whatever is more, um, comfortable for you by basically whatever, whatever will be cheaper, right? That's the most common terms that you, you'll be, um, you'll be um, encounter. Um, now, these two terms means that you have to take care of your transportation, all right? You'll have to hire your freight forwarder, which is a good thing. We'll talk about it later. Uh, what's better to send with your suppliers or ship with your freight forwarder, and we'll talk about it. But these two terms, EXW and FOB, means you as the buyer, is uh, uh, you are responsible for the actual transportation to your uh, warehouse, to your destination, to Amazon, right? The third one would be DDU. DDU means that you buy those 1,000 cups um, under DDU terms. That means the supplier is actual, actually um, in charge of the shipping, all right? The supplier, if you buy those 1,000 cups under DDU terms, now the quote will be 1.8 or 1.7 or 1.9, depends on you know how big are those cups and how volumetric it is. But now the supplier will calculate inside his unit price, inside the unit price, he'll calculate the actual cost of the shipping, right? DDU means, DAP is the new term, DDU 
everybody in China will talk, will speak, will will say DDU, so don't mind DAP. DAP is the right way, but <laughs> never mind. In China, they'll they'll talk in, they'll say DDU. DDU means delivery duty unpaid. You bought your 1,000 cups cups under DDU terms, which means you you bought the cups. The supplier is responsible for manufacturing to, to, to produce those cups and to deliver it to, you, to your designated uh, address overseas, Amazon or your warehouse or your warehouse or whatever, it doesn't really matter. What happens in the back, back end is that supplier knows how much the unit cost is. He knows how much it costs him to produce it. He'll hire or he'll contact a Chinese freight forwarder or if you work in India, he'll the supplier will contact an Indian freight forwarder, a local freight forwarder, and he'll get a quote from his freight forwarder. He'll take that quote and he'll put it onto your unit price, all right? There is no magic, you know, buying DDU, DDP. The costs are there. You know, the transportation costs are inside. Whether you buy this term or that term, the cost per unit is the same. The cost that the unit, the, the cost um, that the manufacturer will have to, to produce that unit is the same. Whether you'll put shipping on top of it or not, that's up to what is more comfortable for, for you and how you prefer the work. Bear in mind that DDU means if you ship to Amazon under DDU terms that it might be a little, pro, a little problematic because Amazon, you must have the products sent there with all duty paid in advance, right? Amazon won't pay the duties for you, so DDU is, is, is not really suitable if you're shipping directly to Amazon. Because what happens on DDU, the supplier will send it overseas. Once it will arrive, the customs in the US, for example, your destination um, uh, country, um, you'll have to pay the duties, all right? The, the freight, the low, the, those, that Chinese freight forwarder that you bought under DDU, which means you have a local Chinese or Indian or whatever freight forwarder behind doing the shipping, his counterpart in the US will contact you once the cargo will arrive and say, hey, I have an import shipment for you. Here is the duty bill, please pay it so I can uh, continue with the delivery. Um, so it might be tricky, all right, if you work with Amazon. That's why everybody recommends, if you work with Amazon if you, and you, if you decide that you wanna let your supplier do the shipping for you, you gotta buy the, the goods under DDP term. DDP is the same, just exactly the same as DDU. It just means the delivery duty paid, all right? DDP, delivery duty paid. It means that the supplier is responsible for produce, producing that units, manufacturing that units, uh, those units, and basically shipping it and covering the duty at destination. Right? If those cups, 1,000 cups, cost us 1.8 uh, dollars per unit under DDU, in DDP the supplier will have to calculate the duty, the import duties in the U.S. and put it into those unit price. So now the unit price will cost us around. $2 a unit or $2.3 a unit, depends on the duty. You know, with Trump, we have a celebration with Trump and the duties now, so beware of that. Um, lastly, CIF, CIF, CIF means cost insurance of freight. I, will, I, will, I would not recommend any new seller buy goods under CIF terms because in CIF terms, you have two forwarders. SIF means the supplier will actually produce the, the units and he will send it up to the destination port, which means the goods will be sent to the US port, to Los Angeles or whatever. And then you'll have to have, then you'll have to hire your own freight forwarder to do the customs clearance for you, pay all the port charges and do the truck into Amazon. So there's too, too, too much hands involved in that. Uh, the, the mistakes there are huge. Uh, we've seen, I actually see it all the time, every, every other week I see a seller bought goods under SIF terms because SIF was very, very cheap. Usually SIF is very, very cheap. The ocean freight portion, you know, only that from port to port, the shipping by ocean, it's, sometimes it's even free. It's so cheap, it's dirty cheap. So it's very tempting to buy under SIF terms because you'll see shipping 50 bucks, 100 bucks, but it's very dangerous. The big costs are customs clearances, duties, trucking, um, handling, documents. Those are the real costs in the international shipping, right? The ocean freight is a very small part of the shipping. Why? Because when you ship small, small product, you know, one pallet, two pallets, the ocean freight portion of it is really 
it's 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 so cheap so it's really tempting but beware of that it's kind of a trap don't fall into that trap either buy under exw fob and have your freight for your own designated freight folder your own partner uh, give you advice on how to do things how to um, how to do it properly give you advice on import duties or, or if you want if you prefer your Chinese supplier to do it you gotta buy under DDO or DDP and again DDP is much more recommended um, that's about it that's really the tip of the iceberg about incoterms incoterms is a really wide subject but we I'm trying to make it simple for you you know I know international shipping can be a real headache um, there's a lot of there, it's a lot there's a lot of things to learn um, mistakes are you know very costly in international trade so I'm trying to keep things simple for you um, and I, I just want I, you don't need to understand all the other in terms everything we're gonna discuss today everything is all on Google on our, all on our website if you have questions about this topic if you need more information just Google it everything is out there you'll see everything on YouTube everything on it's just out there just go ahead and read think about it if you come prepared, if you start talking to suppliers when you understand the Inco terms, there you won't, you know, you won't be caught as a fresh fish. You know, if, if you talk to a supplier and the supplier talks with an EXW and FOB and you start asking him, hey, what EXW means, the supplier instantly knows that you have no clue what you're doing. He knows that it's your first time and you'll pay for it. You know, Chinese, um, Again, I have nothing against Chinese. We work in China. We have a lot of Chinese friends and family. But Chinese are very smart people. They'll reckon, they'll smell you. They'll smell if you know what you're talking about or if you have no clue and you'll actually pay for it, all right? So even if you haven't started talking to supplier, prepare yourself, all right? Read, learn. You are going to build a business, all right? Amazon is a business. We have clients selling th three uh, you know, $30 million a year, $50 million a year, shipping 50, 60 containers a month. It's Amazon can be a, a huge business, all right? Invest your time in it. Learn, um, learn, 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 and learn. Sam, I'm sorry, I don't know how you're going to market it, but if someone tells you Amazon is a two hours job, you know, two hours a day and you start counting the money, that's not true. Amazon is a business like any other business. And you got to work very hard, but it's very rewarding at the end. All right. So keep on learning, keep on reading. Um, that's about it about Incoterm. Sam, do you have any questions regarding that topic before we move on? Nope. So far, very clear. Can right, go to the good. next subject. All right. Next topic. Um, also very important, HS code and import duty on every product that you're going to import into a country, no matter if you're importing into the US, Canada, um, Europe, Australia, Japan, you're going to have to pay import duties, all right? Import duties are determined by HS code. HS codes are internationally standardized system of names and number to classify traded products. Every product has its own classification. Um, just um, the, uh, some uh, knowledge point, US, is one of the one of the easiest countries to import into all right canada you have customs and you have uh, you have duties and you have um gst all right goods and uh, goods and services uh, tax europe you have import duty and you'll have vat um australia you'll have import duty and you'll have gst japan you'll have import duty and you'll have vat us only has import duty, it doesn't have any VAT or GST on imports. Um, and it's actually one of the easiest countries and straightforward countries to import into. Um, so that's uh, just for you to know. Um, so HS code, how do you know what is your product duty, right? You're gonna, you're gonna start sourcing your product and you find a product, you know the unit price is nice, it's good for you. Um, you you kind of understood your shipping cost, but to really understand your landed cost, landed cost means the actual, the final cost of your product, including manufacturing, including shipping, including custom duties, including some additional fees that you may occur, you, you got to put another 5-10%, you know, just to be on the safe side. 
Um, so you gotta, you really got to calculate your import duty. How to do that? All right, let's, let's keep on working on, uh, let me put, take that on top. All right, HS codes are a series of 10 numbers, all right? And those 10 numbers are somewhat identical around the world, and which makes it easier for you to understand um, your product HS code and import duty. The first thing, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta ask your supplier for um, your HS code. That will be the easiest thing because he'll know it, all right? HS codes, the, the first six digit in an HS code, which means the chapter, the, the heading, and the subheading would be identical all around the world, right? The last four digits will be different according to the country of import, all right? But that's a very good start. The, the first six is, is more, than, more than enough to start and understand your import duties. All right. Again, last four digit would be diff will be different for each country. So we gotta start with asking your HS code, uh, asking your HS code from your supplier. He should know it. Um, you gotta go and visit the US harmonized harmonized tariff schedule. And I've got a small sample for you, and we'll we'll do it together now. Um, you gotta scroll down. Let's let's open it. One second. All right. Do you see my screen, Sam? Yeah, I still see the presentation though. All right, let me work on the. I got a new shell. Da, 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 da. All right, here's what I'm gonna show. Yeah, there you go. So you can just show my whole screen. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so if I'll go back to the presentation, um, so you gotta find your HS code from the supplier. Let's work on that example. We write it down. We have. Let's talk about the makeup brush set. Let's say we our supplier. Our supplier will give us something that looks like that, a series of ten numbers. Uh, but actual HS code is has dots to differentiate the, the chapter, the heading, and the subheading. All right. So the supplier will give us for. Let's say we're gonna buy those makeup brush set. The supplier will give us nine, six zero double three, zero. Nine nine nine. Right? That's how an HS code from a supplier will come. All right, a long list of a long number. And what I'll do is I'll uh, da, 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 da. I'll go to the harmonized tariff schedule, that's the US website for our import duties, and I'll start with imp well, with inputting my first four digits. All right, we remember we said these are identical to each country in each country around the world, right? And that chapter talks about brooms, brushes, um, uh, hand operated mechanical voice, slipper, not motorized. Sounds not really related, but let's keep on do the dot and let's keep on with the, with the subheading, all right? With point 0.30, all right? And we got artist brushes, writing brushes, and similar brushes for the application of cosmetics. All right, and then we gotta move on. Remember we said the first six digits will be identical around the world. And we have, uh, da, 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 we have that, the, uh, you see what I did here? I just put dots to differentiate the, four, the first four digit, the first, the, the next, the following two digits. And now the four digits, are, the four last digits, I'm, I need to find the most appropriate description for my own product. All right, again, guys, customs classification is a profession. People learn years and years on how to do it properly. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to give you the basics so um, you'll know a bit what you're doing. Um, so let's say, you see, we have 9603.30, and now you see the four, the four digits, the last four digits will actually talk about for cosmetics brushes, for example, they want to know what is their value. If they if they are valued not over five cent each, that is your correct correct HS code, all right? And that's your import duty, two point six percent. You gotta look on the general note, all right? If they are valued over five cents but not over ten cents each, they are free of duty, no duty, all right? If they are valued over ten cents each, they are also free, all right? And that will be your HS code. And 
it just keeps on going and going. There's thousands and thousands of thousands of classification in that directory. Um, it's kind of a trial and error thing. Um, I would really, really recommend that you consult with a freight forwarder before you take a decision because most likely you'll do it wrong in the first couple of times until you really get it. Um, so you gotta ask your freight forwarder, ask your customs broker. He'll know, he'll know what's best for you. And sometimes he can give you tips on how to save a lot of uh, money on duties um, because in the next example, I'm gonna show you how we can, how we, how we um, investigate HS codes for our clients and we actually find um, the correct HS code or trying to find a, a, a more suitable HS code or a different HS code because products can be classified sometimes differently. The same product can have two or three different classifications. For example, um, let's say an outset. An outset can be classified. An outset, an outset that has pencils in it, it has a pencil sharpener, it has a small scalpel knife. It can be classified as pencils and pencil sharpeners, or it can be classified as an outset and as, as a set. And the duties of, you know, outset, outwork set is free of duty. Pencils have duties. Uh, pencil sharpener has about 5% duty and trump duty. So this goes up to 30%. So it's a really delicate um, work. Um, you gotta be very professional in order to do it. Um, so try doing it yourself, but you gotta then consult some someone with more um, knowledge and expertise until you get it right. Now let's talk about Trump. Trump, we all heard of the trade war. Uh, we all know about it. Um, you'll soon feel it if you if you're importing from China. You'll feel it in your pocket. And what happens is. The problem with that director, the U.S. director, it will only give you the actual duty. It won't say if that product or HS code has um, Trump duty on it. And don't ask me why, it's stupid. But in order to find if your product, has, if your product is uh, subject to Trump duty, you got to go over a long list of HS code that Trump has issued. What we did in Unicago is if you'll Google... Um, Unicago, Unicago HS code. If you Google that, you see the first result would be a tool that we actually built where, where you can input your um, HS code and it'll just pull it up from the list and it'll tell you if it has Trump duty or not. All right, just Google Unicago HS code um, and just let's try this one. Actually, I didn't try it, so let's try it right now. We have 960, all right, all right, I got it right, written down here. So we'll start with 9603.30. Happy times, your HS code was not found, which means the text on your product has not been updated. Again, we, we make, make sure that you, you typed it correctly. Again, we don't want people to mistake, so we always, uh, we always tell them disclaimer, the information about should not replace consultation with a certified custom broker. But that tool is very, very accurate. If you're gonna put the first, first four digits and the second um, digits after that, it means the whole chapter is not under Trump duty and that product doesn't have Trump duty. Um, so basically what happened here is that we found out that artist brushes for um, cosmetics, uh, if they are valued um, between over five cents and, ten, uh, and not over 10 cents each, they are free of duty. And even if they are valued over 10 cents each, they're also free of duty, no Trump, um, no Trump duty there. So um, free, zero, total zero, it's nice. Again, that's a very, very quick, um, very quick and not really comprehensive guide on how to classify products. I can talk for days and days and days on customs classification and how to classify and what's the rules and what's binding rulings and how customs look at things and what is right, what is legal, what is not legal. Here we only have an hour, so I had to make it very, very short. Um, so again, the steps would be ask for the HS code from your supplier, visit the US harmonized tariff schedule to find out, to, to, you know, to do the fine tuning, to find out the US HS code because that's what will matter. Um, scroll, down, scroll down, try to find the most suitable description for your product. Um, see what the actual product is. Again, Trump duty, 
let's say if your product has 10% duty and it is subject to trunk duty, it, it's now 35%, all right? Trunk duty doesn't replace, it's, it adds up on the actual duty that found on uh, the tariff schedule. All right, so that's another thing to remember. Um, so you gotta find your original duty rate and then you gotta find out if your product is under trunk regulation or not. Um, uh, I hope for you it's not. I'll do a very, another small example of, you know, we had a client, um, I think it was last year, importing baby monitors, very big client of ours. Um, you can see that his invoice values are $98,000 and the HS code given him by the supplier and that what he was working with for a couple of years before he came to us was that, all right? 8527.99.400. And that HS code means reception, da, 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 da. That's, an, that's, that's a correct HS code. And it was subject to trunk duty, all right, 25%, which means his duty was $24,000. And when he came with us to us with his first shipment and he told us about his business and he gave us the HS code, and the first thing we did, that was last year when Trump just made those um, hits on the duty. So we were really checking every client. And the first thing we asked him, all right, we see that your shipments are very high value. What is your HS code? And we looked at the HS code that he gave us, the actual client, that's what he used to pay. He gave us that HS code and we said, all right, we took a day, we opened the book, we sat on there and we found, <clears throat> we actually found a better HS code. You know, we asked customer it was, and this was the right HS code for him you know, was this, which is free. And it came from $24,000 on duty, it came to zero in duties, all right? If you look at 8528, it actually talks about monitors. And if you look at the actual final HS code, which is the 1500, it was talking about the video display and the size of it. And we found out that this video display size was not exceeding 34.29 34 centimeters. The actual video screen was not over that. And that means it's a different product, a different HS code, and it was free. And obviously that client is, um, was, you know, he, he couldn't be more happy with that. And he's obviously still with us. And that's, that's for example, why that's the difference with working with your own freight forwarder than working with your supplier to do the shipping for you. When you work with your supplier, you have no relations with a freight forwarder, all right? The Chinese, the supplier will contact the Chinese freight forwarder. And if something happens, you'll have to talk to your supplier and then your supplier will have to talk to his freight forwarder. You'll never be in touch with the freight forwarder. And when, again, for your first shipping, it might be fine. You know, you'll have a small shipment to try the, to test the waters, you know, with Amazon. That might be fine. It won't be, you know, a big loss or a big mistake. But when you grow big, you must have your own partner. You must have your team of experts working with you, whether it's, um, you know, it's a, an accountant, a lawyer, a freight forwarder. You got to have your own group of experts working for your business. All right. It's like, it's like going to court without a lawyer. All right. It's, it's, it's wrong. It just, again, first couple of shipments, they are very small. They, they would be very small. No, not such, no such room for mistakes. You might get away with working a supply. It might be more comfortable for you, but the sooner you'll start, um, you know, um, building a relationship with a logistics partner, the better. They can give you, again, it doesn't matter if it's Unicargo, one of the thousands of freight forwarder out there. They, a freight forwarder of your own choice would be able to talk to you, to give you advice, to guide you, because you are not an expert in shipping. And that's fine. You don't need to be an expert in shipping. You've got to have experts besides you. And that's what, that's what matters. Um, that's about HS codes. Sam, questions or should we move on? Well, that was very clear, and that's uh, that's that must have been quite the good news for that guy <laughs> to save twenty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just one. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that was uh, was really good. Uh, it's, it's you make it uh, seem quite easy to figure out what the the HS code is, and 
Uh, it's not that easy. The basics are easy, but yeah. once you start playing with it, you understand it's not that easy, but the basics are good enough. You know, you'll, uh, you'll, start, you'll have an understanding when you talk to a freight forwarder, when he'll give you, when he'll give you an HS, so you will be able to go and check. And you'll be able to understand what, again, this whole thing, I won't be able to teach freight forwarding, you know, in one hour. It takes years and years to learn it, you know. So we, we, we will try to give the basics, um, but the basics are good enough, you know. All right, okay. uh, let's move on. As you mentioned earlier, uh, Amazon, it's a real business. Like people have to understand all exactly. the of their business that they want to be able to optimize it. So uh, that's... Uh, Obviously, exactly. you don't work with the freight forwarder because uh, you don't want to become an expert in that. It's going to take way too much of your time, but it's good. Exactly. To it's like you know when you when you when you build your uh, listing page and you wanna you wanna f you you need a good good graphic design. You don't go and learn graphic design and do it yourself. You hire a good designer. That's exactly the same thing. Um, and, and again, that's something I talk a lot in my lectures and, and webinars about, you know, building a business because people think, a lot of people think or mistakenly go into that business, you know, get it going after, you know, a Facebook ad when they say, you know, in Israel, I'm from Israel. In Israel, we are a very small country. It's a funny story. We are a very small country. We have over 10 Amazon schools and academies. The whole country is 6 million people. And the... There is 10 schools, right? Some of these schools, you know, um, some of these schools would be very, very aggressive in marketing. Um, and they're like, hey, here how you can make $10,000 profit a month working two hours a day from the beach on your laptop. And, you know, we all would laugh at it and in the big Amazon community because, again, building a business is like building any other business. Any of you listeners, if you, had a, if you had your own business before, you understand what I'm talking about. Having your own business is a 24-hour work, seven days a week, and sometimes even more than that. But the beautiful thing about having a business on Amazon is the, um, you won't need to put as much money as you need to put in a, in a, you know, a brick-and-mortar business to open a shop. Um, you can start with 10K, 20K, and even lower than that. And the rewards are really, 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 really big. And again, if you build it right, after a year, after two years, you can really enjoy financial freedom. And we see it all the time. We have a lot of clients, you know, big clients that they know what they're doing. They do it for a couple of years. They live in Thailand. They live in Bali. We see them, you know, Amazon created these, you know, digital nomads where people just work from beautiful places and live in beautiful places and make money. That's the dream. It's achievable. It's there, but you can't. You, you don't reach it by working an hour a day, or two hours a day, or even three hours a day. All right. When you build your business, work twenty hours a day. That's how you succeed. All right. That's there. Is, there are no shortcuts. You gotta work twenty hours a day and more if you wanna succeed. All right. That's my two cents on uh, on that. Let's move on. Um, 10 common mistakes to avoid. That's one of my favorite parts because even the biggest sellers fall for these um, mistakes. And so newer seller will definitely fall for the mistakes and that's why we are here um, to make sure you understand those mistakes. All right, first mistakes, uh, first mistake, amending product value to reduce import costs. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are doing it. Chinese especially, that's how, you, you'll know what I'm talking about, that's how Chinese competition on, on Amazon can sell their products so cheap because they just do some frauds. Um, a lot of people are doing it, whether they are Chinese or not Chinese, a lot of people are doing it. We don't recommend doing it, but you'll still do it because I know you guys. Um, we, again, we don't recommend doing it from our experience, a lot of clients are asking about this story. A lot of people are asking us, hey, can I reduce my, my, input, my invoice duty, my, invoice, my commercial invoice? Again, you are responsible and you are exposed to penalties and sections if you are getting caught. CBP, which means Customs Border Protection, that's the US uh, Customs uh, Authorities, they keep a huge data, um, database of suppliers, products, 
and past shipments. They know how to spot an exception. All right. Now, if you reduce 20 percent from your commercial invoice, probably you know what? To be honest, no one will catch you. If you reduce 30% of your invoice value, no one will catch you. If you reduce 50% of your invoice value, that's risky. If you reduce more than 60% of your invoice value, you can get caught very easily, all right? Again, think about it. You know, if you are a very big buyer, you probably, buy, you probably get a discount, all right? You probably buy 10% lower than market, 20%, 35% lower than the regular importer. Right, but nobody buys it on a 50 to 60 percent lower than other imported. All right, no matter how big you are, again, costs are costs, the cost is there. So, again, I'm, I'm not recommending doing it if you are doing it, which again is not recommended and is highly illegal. But if you're doing it, do it smartly. Again, don't do it, but if you're doing it doing it don't be stupid all right don't get caught because you can lose a shipment they can actually confiscate your shipment customs won't ask you won't give you excuses they'll they do what they want to do and you can if you want to talk to them you gotta have, you gotta have a lawyer that will cost you thousands and thousands of dollars and you'll just give up I, i'm telling i'm saying it from experience i've dealt with a lot of customs um problems with clients and we we had to hire uh, lawyers for some clients and it's a mess don't get into it all right secondly and we see that actually all the time getting consultation from your manufacturer regarding import regulation that's one of the biggest mistakes you can have your supplier again if you're going to talk to people on alibaba that's not you know that's that might be, it's not, it's not by you. That's definitely a salesperson. He's very young. He knows good English compared to older people in China. All he cares is about selling his products. He has no clue about import regulation in the US or in the in UK or wherever you import your products into. And he'll tell you what you wanna hear in order to sell the product. FDA, yeah, of course we have everything needed. Or oh, oh, FDA, no, this product doesn't need FDA. Don't worry, we ship it all the time. All right? So suppliers will often give you an advice or a sales pitch regarding the regulation or certificate needed to the, import, to the import of their products. Importation into the US, US has, a, besides CBP, which is Customs Border Protection, you have CPSC, which is Children's Safety Product Commission uh, that monitors all children products. You have FDA, for medical devices, cosmetics, food. You have USDA for everything related to soil, plants, um, living things. You have fish and wildlife. You have a lot of different government authorities. All of these authorities, some of the products will need additional certificates, additional um, licenses in order to import. So don't get import regulation consultation from your Chinese factory. You must have a freight forwarder to give you that consultation, all right? Uh, and if you're gonna import into the US, you really want a freight forwarder with experience importing to the US. If you're importing into Canada, you must have a freight forwarder with experience importing into Canada. Again, most, pro I'm not, I, I don't wanna scare you, right? Most product doesn't need special certificate or, uh, or, or have regulation for import. Some of them do. You know, in, 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 in the US, FDA medical devices considered everything that is related to pain or even to ease pain is a medical device. You know, two years or three years ago, first aid kits in Amazon was the whole thing, you know, that was the product of the year. A lot of people were bringing in first aid kits. And first aid kits are medical devices in the US. Your supplier has to be registered with FDA. You as an importer must be registered with, with, with the FDA as a, as a medical device importer. And we've seen, we've seen at least 50 shipments get 50 shipments, 50 different shipments for 50 different clients 
get confiscated, right? It, it didn't happen on our shipment because before we got a shipment from Thailand, we, because we, we, under, we understand really good import regulation, if a client comes to us and we know this is a regular product, we won't touch the product unless he has this and this and this needed. We just won't touch the product because it's, it's a disaster. Um, you know, Sam, it's a funny story. People that start starting selling on Amazon, that, you know, you know these the new sellers, they usually they'll blame you or us for import regulation. Import regulation is the sole uh, responsibility of the importer. You have to find out your import regulation, right? As I said here, IOR, which is import of record, is solely responsible for import compliance of his products. Again, that's uh, same thing as I said before, learn your business, learn your product, understand what is needed. And hey, you can get this advice for free. It doesn't really, it doesn't really need to cost you money. Just talk to people, talk to professional people. They'll give you advice for free. Um, third thing, um, the third thing will be ignoring Amazon shipment policy changes. Um, that's for more advanced sellers. Um, back in August two, uh, 2018, Amazon did a shipment policy change. Um, and it's, it's, they sent an email to all the third party sellers on Amazon regarding shipping manipulation. Shipping manipulation was, you know that Sam, you know, you probably know that when you create a shipping plan on Amazon and Amazon splits your shipping into three different locations, gets your logistic costs up to the roof. What people used to do is they'll, let's say, sorry, let's say you have 1000 units and Amazon splits it into three. People would, re, would delete that 1000 unit shipment and create a 3000 unit shipment. And then Amazon will split 3000 units into three locations. And then you'll find the location that Amazon gave you a right, send 1,000 units to that location, and they would just pick one location and delete the other two. Understand? And then they kind of trick the system and they, find they got one location because they created three times bigger shipment in Amazon and they still send it once and they deleted the other two. Amazon see it as shipment, as shipment manipulation. It's very dangerous to do now. Um, uh, um, having two shipment, two different shipments on one shipping plan is also became from forbidden by Amazon. A lot of people do it, used to do it at least. Uh, for example, let's say you have a shipment, you you manufacture these one thousand cups, and you want part of it to send by air, part of it to send by ocean, right? You want have you want I don't know a, a third of it or a quarter of it to arrive fast by air, so you can start rank it and the rest of it cheaper by ocean. You gotta create two shipping plans for it today um, because that's against Amazon policy now. People used to keep one shipping plan and send portion of it by air, which will arrive very fast, and then a month later, the other portion will arrive by ocean. It's now forbidden. Um, again, that's, for a bit, uh, that's a bit for more uh, advanced servers. Uh, shipping policy change. If you want, at the, to and the, at the end of this presentation, I'll have my email. If you want the full uh, shipping policy change, I can email it to you. Just email me. Um, four, go after price and not your business needs when evaluating evaluating shipping quotes. Right? A lot of times, a lot of times, people will just, you know, last week I spoke to a, a seller. He sent us a quote. And we, he sent us an RFQ, a quote request, and he sent us back, a, 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 he sent, we sent in, a, our sales team sent him a price, and he sent us back after, a, I don't know, after a couple of hours, he sent us, hey, you came out fourth or fifth in my list of uh, RFQs for, the, for that shipment. And you know, out of curiosity, my team asked, how many, how many, how many freight forward did you ask? And he replied, I asked 40. So sometimes 40, 40. He asked 40 forwarders for a price for his shipment. Now we all laughed at it. That's the first time we saw such case. And you know, my pricing team printed uh, that email and saw it around the office. It was a funny thing. Sometimes people will ask a couple of freight forwarders and that's perfectly fine that I would do that as well. You don't need to ask 40, two or three, four is enough. Um, to get to make sure you're not you're getting a good deal 
but sometimes going only for the cheapest option is not the right way because the cheapest options will be the slowest options. Sometimes the cheapest options could take 60 days where a slightly higher option which has a better route and a better way of shipping would take 30 days by ocean. And now you save $200 on your shipping, but then you lost 30 days of sales or you know you lost 30 days of your business. So does it really worth $200? Does it worth that $50 or $100? So learn how to read a shipping quote. Uh, we also talk a lot about it in our uh, webinars and, and, and content. Learn routings, all right? Where, where does it go out of in China? What is the port of entry in the US? What is the transit time between point A to point B? How does it get to Amazon from point B? Um, there is a lot of different ways to ship. Today we have, in our company, we have almost 12 different products. When we say products, I mean shipping methods, where they're by ocean, you can have a truck coming into Amazon. Or Today we know how to deliver a product by ocean in 12 days, from China to Amazon, 12 days. Right? That's the most expensive part of the ocean, but that's less expensive than air. Right? That it'll cost about $2 a kilo. For ocean, it's expensive, but it's much less expensive than air, and it's kind of in the middle. We have ocean that will take 25 days. We have ocean freight that will take 35 days, and we have ocean freight that will take 50 days. Understand your needs first, all right? Freight forwarding to Amazon is very advanced, and it's always evolving. There's, there are always new products in the market. Some of them very, very slow and very cheap. Some of them very, very fast and very expensive. You know, we have clients, you know, a big client, you know that, a big seller on Amazon, if you, go out, you, if you go out of stock on your best seller that sells, I don't know, 200 units a day, you're gonna lose a lot of money. And we have sellers, you know, we have a shipping ways of we can ship a product to Amazon from China to, to Amazon receiving it in two days, all right? That's a very, very expensive service that's, you know, it goes out to eight or nine dollars a kilo, but it's very fast and sometimes we have big sellers shipping thousands of kilos with that service, all right? Shipping two, three tons because they are out of stock and they need it tomorrow. They don't care about the price. They don't even ask about the price. They ask how fast can it be? Um, so understand your business needs. Learn to calculate your business needs and then, and then only then evaluate your shipping quote. Don't always go to the cheapest. It's very tempting to go for the cheapest price but it's not always what you need. It's not always what your business needs. Sometimes you better put additional 200 or 300, but you get your products much faster or you get a better quality service or you have a partner that you can actually talk to and phone to and, and, and you know, get consultation. Sometimes it's worth a lot. All right. Uh, da, 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 next one. Uh, miscalculating your true landed costs. All right. Landed costs mean the actual cost, we discussed it uh, earlier, that landed cost means the actual cost of your product at Amazon after all the supply chain, all right? Shipping, um, import duty, last mile. Um, if you have multiple Amazon destination, you gotta calculate the whole thing. Um, if you're shipping an oversized uh, product, you know, a lot of people can come to us, you know, a new seller, that's new sellers do it, the most, they, they want to get a freight quote, they want to get a shipping quote, but they don't have, uh, they didn't open a, uh, a shipping plan yet, so they don't have their destination address. That's a big mistake because I understand that you want a price, but the, the freight cost will change dramatically because of your final destination delivery address, right? It can be a huge different with the with 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 you changing the delivery address all right so whether if you started um manufacturing if you started producing a product create a shipping plan it'll take it'll last for six months create a shipping plan have your final delivery address by amazon all right understand your true cost that's very expensive um sometimes not sometimes keep in mind unexpected cost on 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 calculating your landed cost all right 
customs exams randomly, but it happens, you know, a customs exam, storage, detention times and more, take a bit extra on your landed cost just to be on the safe side. Um, six, cut on shipping marks to match your import documents. Again, that's a bit more advanced. Um, shipping marks on carton, when you manufacture a product, your supplier will ask you, do you want a shipping mark, all right? Your, you know, your master box, the big brown box that, covers the, that holds all of your, um, your units, your product. Shipping marks are marks that you put on the outer of the carton to identify your product, to identify your shipment. You don't need to identify your shipment, but an international shipment goes over so many stations and so many hands Think about it. You'll have a driver picking up from your supplier. The driver will send it to the port warehouse. In the port warehouse, we'll have someone unloading the truck. And another person put it in, into a container. Then it'll go into the ocean, and then someone at destination will open that container and will need to sort and segregate and find your boxes, put them on pallet. And then you'll have another hand for the trucker to deliver it, and then another hand on Amazon. You gotta have your shipping marks on that carton so you can distinguish your carton. So the freight company can distinguish your carton. For example, um, an LCL carrier, which means less than container or shipping lines, a lot of the time will ask us, hey, can you give us the shipping marks on, those, on that order? Why? Because they, they wanna make sure they found all the cartons in that container for you. If you have a small shipment by ocean, you'll go into container with other sellers with other importers. It's not your own container. You've got you, you to be combined into a big consolidation. We, freight forwarders, shipping lines, everybody that deal with your freight, uh, deal with your freight, we need to, to be, we need to easy, easily identify your products. And that's what Shipping Mark does, right? Just have your brand name on it, have your marker, mark carton count on it, you know, one out of 100, two out of 100, three out of 100, three out of 100, just uh, count them and put your brand name, you can put your model name, that's, that's more than fine. Seven, mistiming your shipments. Um, forwarders will usually show transit time on their quotes that actually port to port, all right, 20 days or 70 days, that's, that's not the real transit time, all right? From the time the cargo, the cargo is being picked up in China until the actual departure of the ship, there is a week in between operational time. After the ship will arrive, it will take some time to unload that ship, right? To open that container, to put it all on pallet, for the truck to come and pick it up. There's another week there. So in between, you have two weeks at least for ocean shipping, right? You've got to learn to time your shipments, all right? Mistiming your shipments means out of stock, and out of stock mean, means a big loss of money. Um, Amazon appointments, of course. Uh, I don't want to go into, I don't want to uh, confuse you with too much uh, advanced uh, things, but yeah, learn how to time your shipments. Again, that's what you have a freight forwarder for. Um, he'll be able to give you a good consultation on that. Eight, not working directly with a freight forwarder of your cho choice. I think I've <clears throat> mentioned how important it is. When you grow big, you must have your hand-picked team of service provider. When shipping with your supplier, you have no direct contact with your freight forwarder. Professional advice, insurance, solution to problems that arise, much better communication. Simple as that. <coughs> Sorry, that's our recommendation. Nine, exporting non-general goods under EXW terms. We've discussed it on the INCO terms portion. Non-general goods, everything that includes powders, liquids, batteries, maps. Maps are very complicated to export out of China, by the way. Don't buy that under EXW terms because you'll have to take care of export regulation in China. Sorry, export regulation in China, super complicated um, if you don't know what you're doing. And we know what we are doing, but it will cost you money. So non-general goods, Buy it under FOB terms, save yourself time, save yourself money. Then not insuring your shipments. Insurance is a fraction of the cost. It's very, very cheap. Um, insurance for, I don't know, $20,000 would cost you around 30 to 40 bucks. Insure your product. Go, you know, sleep safe, sleep sound, you know. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to have a, a, 
a shipment that is lost or stranded or I don't know destroyed or damaged and again it's a very small chance so you know one out of ten thousands or, or twenty thousand but keep yourself safe it's it's very cheap why not um I guess no so no special question about that part right Sam um yeah continue all right, mastering last mile delivery, that will be our last topic for today. Um, when you create a shipping plan on Seller Central, there are different ways to, um, to, to classify your products, your goods, which means you'll have a shipping service in Amazon when you create a shipping plan. You'll have either to choose SPD, small parcel delivery, you can see it on the bottom here, or you need to choose less than truckload. Right, and then again, that's your freight folder will give you that information. If you ship by Express, DHL, FedEx, TNT, UPS, you gotta pick, you gotta, you gotta choose small parts of delivery, SPD. If you ship by ocean, if you ship pallets, if you know that the truck, a truck with pallets going to deliver to Amazon, you gotta choose LTL. It's very, very important because if you'll have claims, if you Amazon will lose some of your uh, units, you'll have to, do, you will have to provide the right type of proof of delivery. If you shipped um, Express, all right, which should supposed to be uh, marked on your, on your seller center when you create the shipping. If you should ship Express, DHL, FedEx, TNT, those Express companies, if you ship your products with Express and you mark that you are delivering less than truckload, you're gonna be in a very big problem if Amazon will lose some of your units and that happens a lot. Amazon will actually ask you for a proof of delivery from a trucker, all right? Signed by Amazon and you won't have it because you delivered your products in a different method. Um, to summarize it, SPD small parts delivery means loose boxes by your courier companies, FedEx, UPS, TNT, DHL, USPS, and Sprinter trucks. These are very small um, vans that deliver. Um, they have tracking per individual box. No delivery appointment is needed. In order to deliver a product to Amazon or shipping into Amazon, the carrier or the freight forwarder would have to schedule an appointment, a delivery appointment. Nobody can just come up and show with your boxes and deliver it. Only those SPD carriers, they don't need the delivery appointment. When we deliver a shipment by a truck, which means palletized cargo, we got to schedule a delivery appointment and Amazon will tell us exactly when to arrive. It's up to Amazon to decide. Um, so make sure you understand SPD versus LTL. And make sure you choose this correctly. You can consult with the freight forward. He'll know the best um, how he's gonna deliver it, and he'll tell you what to mark there. Um, another tip, and I think that's our last tip for today: the final delivery address that Amazon will give you will have a major effect on freight costs. And if you look at the map here, China is on the left, US is on the on the right. If you'll see China, and Los Angeles is the fastest route. If Amazon will give you a, a warehouse to deliver your products around Los Angeles area around, or in California, all right, that would be the cheapest and fastest. But if Amazon will give you a delivery address in New York, which is in the other side, either the ship will have to go through the um, Panama Canal, Gulf of Mexico, and then to New York, which would be much more expensive and, and the transit time would be much um, higher. Or it will either go by, in, into Los Angeles and then trucked all the way to New York or again the same as in Kentucky, Tennessee, um, North Carolina. So if you would be able to change your ship to address, all right, when, again when you create a shipping plan, I'm sure Sam will cover it in, in his videos, when you create a shipping plan, Amazon will tell you where to ship. What we found out that the ship from where we, you create a shipping plan, you also input where you're shipping from. And we found out that the ship from sometimes, and again, it's a hack, it doesn't work all the time, but sometimes the ship from actually affects the ship too. We recommend our clients to, to put the ship from uh, as our US uh, warehouse in Los Angeles. And a lot of the time when you put a US warehouse and Los Angeles address, you'll get a Los Angeles delivery address. It, it'll, it'll work on the algorithm, on Amazon algorithm. Again, it doesn't work all the time. 30, 40% of the time, it'll work. Try it. 
it doesn't cost you anything, right? But it can save you a lot of money. So you might you, you can contact us, we can give you a, a warehouse address to create the ship from. Um, that's not a problem. Um, and da, 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 da. basically the warehouse is basically where we prepare the shipments to Amazon. So it's actually correct. That's the right ship from and not China because you won't deliver products to Amazon by the ship. You know, the ship from China won't go into Amazon. A truck from our warehouse or from other from other warehouse will go to Amazon. So actually this, the correct ship from is a US address and not to put your Chinese address. But again, putting the Chinese address is fine as well. You can try them both, see what you get, open the map, try to calculate, consult with freight forwarder. That's it for today. I spoke too much. Uh, wow. <laughs> that's it. Thank you for listening, guys. Uh, that's my email address there. Google Unicargo if you can find us anywhere. Uh, anyway, I would love to hear your feedback about my session. Feel free to email me, ping me, Facebook. Um, I'm all around the social media. Yeah. I have just a quick question. Um, at the beginning of the presentation, there was uh, Amazon official solution provider. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. never used that. So, like, how does that work? How can people, uh, I know there's a section on Seller Central that you can uh, select. Right. Amazon, Amazon has a, spe have a specific um, partners that they chose. Unicargo is one of Amazon solution providers. Uh, which means Amazon has actually audited our company for over two years uh, where we had to show uh, our licenses and regulation and SOP and we had to show them how we work and what is the workflow in our company, how many people we have, how does our China office work, how does our US office work, how does it all control from our headquarters in Israel. And they actually audit us for two years and then we got approved by, to be an Amazon solution provider. Um, only about 30 freight forwarders around the world are approved by Amazon. We are one of them. Um, how does it work? We are, we are connected to Amazon warehouses by IT systems. Uh, we, can, we schedule our own appointments. When we have containers going into Amazon, when we have trucks going into Amazon, we talk directly to Amazon and we don't let other people do it. We control the whole thing. We control the booking with the ocean freight. We control that. We control directly booking with Amazon. We have our own inbound team in Amazon. So if our clients have any problem with shipping, receiving, shipment receiving, um, I don't know, Amazon lost their shipping, we can help because we are connected directly to the inbound um, seller, uh, the inbound department in Amazon. Um, again, but for us, the big benefit is that we are connected directly to Amazon uh, uh, systems and we can book our own appointments with Amazon. And we kind of, it's an art, you know, scheduling delivery point with Amazon, it's an art. Christmas time, December time, um, you know, quarter four. Today you'll ask a request uh, for appointment with Amazon. You'll tell them, hey, I have my freight ready. I want to deliver my product. If you're in quarter four, they'll give you two weeks, all right? Hey, Sam, come two weeks from now to deliver your products. Quarter four, that might be a very big loss. We, you know, when we have container on the, on the way, we have our clients, cargo on the way, we book an appointment with them with Amazon while the cargo is still on the sea. Because we know in advance to calculate when Amazon will give us. When you have Amazon system, when you try, when you start and go and book your shipment, you, you will tell Amazon, hey, I wanna come tomorrow. And then after two hours, you'll get uh, a reply uh, from the system. Your schedule appointment is in two weeks from now. So you can request, but they don't care what you request. They'll give you according to their timeline. So what happens is in peak time, in peak season, we schedule the delivery appointment. We, we know that your, your container will arrive in two weeks. We take another five, six days as a, as a gap, as a, you know, as a safety distance. And we book it about a week after the ETA of the container. So we give some, we, it's an art. We, we, do, we do it thousands of times a month. So we master that. That for us, that's the benefit. Um, for the seller, it's it means that Amazon has a approved uh, partners and they audit it and they recommend. So it's another you know it's another uh, uh, stamp. You know, it's to, to, if you want to be safe, you can work with uh, with uh, with Amazon partners. Great. All right. Thank you so much for providing all of that incredible value. I think. Uh, 
people are gonna have a, are gonna be able to save a lot of money. Great. Thank you for having me, Sam.